When the Walt Disney Company decided they were going to destroy Splash Mountain and replace it with Tiana's Bayou Adventure, surely they thought that the reception would be warmer than what they're getting now. No, though. They're coming up all wet, as now even the Imagineers are starting to feel the pressure. They're sweating, and there's no relief in sight. All right, folks, welcome back. We are here to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. It's what we do each and every day here on the WDW Pro channel. Such a joy and a pleasure to get to share our time with you. If you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to the algorithms when you click it. We're talking about that notification bell. Joining me to talk about Splash Mountain, including an exclusive piece of information that is going to shock many of you, is the wonderful Lorena Creole. Welcome back to the channel. Well, oh, thank you. I'm glad to be back and thank you for having me back. Now, folks, we are going to save the big, big news, the exclusive for this channel until the end of the video. That is not to manipulate at all. That is simply because it's the natural flow of what we need to discuss. And what we need to discuss begins with People Magazine. Let's get into it right now. It says, Disney execs admit they feel pressure replacing Splash Mountain, creating Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And Lorena, one of the interesting things to me about this is I have heard more about these Imagineers being in New Orleans than I have heard about them actually working on the ride. It seems like every few months they're back over there doing some sort of Q&A or P PR session. So, But it says, during a Q&A in New Orleans, the creative minds behind the forthcoming reimagining of the classic ride share details about what to expect from the Princess and the Frog themed attraction to come. Which, by the way, folks, could just be solved if we had seen actual concepts of what happens inside of it. But we haven't. Mm-hmm. Days before Splash Mountain's final drop at Disneyland on May 31st, a group of Disney Imagineers fielded questions from press and influencers about Tiana's Bayou Adventure, the new attraction replacing the classic ride in 2024. Asked by one attendee if they feel the pressure of replacing such an iconic piece of the theme parks, Disney's Senior Vice President of Parks Experience and Projects, Carmen Smith, responded with every day. And by the way, we have been highly critical of Carmen Smith. I do not know of a single project that she has ever brought to fruition successfully. And then we have this. This is a real gem, Lorraine. And we're going to have to pause here to talk about this one. This is from mm -hmm. Disney Executive Creative Director, Ted Robledo. He says, I grew up with Splash Mountain too. We know there's a lot of love there. The team asked ourselves, what do people really love about it? Get ready. Get, this is unbelievable. We think they love the thrill, the adventure. So we said, okay, that is sacred. We cannot take that away. Lorena, have you ever heard such a stupid answer to a very good question? Let me just, let me just bake this, let me boil it down, and then I want you to have at it, because this one deserves it. Just unleash. But if you ask me what makes Splash Mountain special, I don't think that I would just say, uh, wait a minute, let me ponder that really hard. Thrill and adventure, that's Splash Mountain. That's what we can't get rid of. I think that there's something more to this ride than thrill and adventure. That is the most blasé, stupid answer. Take it away. That is such a BS corporate, isn't it? Non artistic answer that I have ever heard. And uh, Mr. Robledo should be embarrassed to call himself a creative director for for just uh, for say for saying that the what people love about Splash Mountain are one the adorable little critters that are that yes. are in there with the their music. little ecosystem the music the recreation of that atmosphere um, come to life especially for someone like me where my grandmother told me these burr rabbit stories. I had the burr rabbit story in a book, you know, that I love so much that the spine's coming off of it. Getting in this attraction, you feel like you are in the world of burr rabbit. You feel as if you are kind of like observing burr rabbit getting into trouble that you know he's going to uh he's going to get into and we just love the pageantry the music the um just that back 
off-road country feel. It just feels good to ride this attraction and you come off of this attraction, you know, smiling, singing zippity doo -dah. I know I did. Oh, you're not allowed to sing that song anymore. That's a mm -hmm. bad song now. Yeah. Some folks Won an Oscar though for that. the first, uh, the very first time for a black actor in Hollywood. That was a big time success story mm -hmm. for Walt and for everyone who was trying to get into uh, cinema, uh, who was a minority, huge success, but you can't listen to that song anymore. No, now, cannot, can't do that. <laughs> so Lorena, we know that they're, these, these are real experts they've put on the job to handle this. I mean, they've boiled down Splash Mountain to thrill and adventure. That would never apply to anything else, just Splash Mountain. It's unique to the ride. That's what they're going to say. So here's what it says. In 2020, it was announced that Disney would reimagine Splash Mountain, which is based on the controversial 1946 Disney film Song of the South, a work long criticized for its portrayal of the post-Civil War South and for utilizing uh, bad tropes. Of course, they don't go on to say, by the way, it also uh, was a huge success in being the first film to feature a leading black actor as the leading protagonist and won him an Oscar. They don't tell that. But anyway. Uh, they say, they revealed that the ride would be rethemed to tell a story based on Disney's 2009 animated film, The Princess and the Frog, shortly after a petition during a very, they leave this out too, during a time of heightened uh, sensitivities during that summer of 2020. Yes. But that uh, that's what happened. I'm just going to tell people what really went on here. Disney, when this began to be an issue, they needed a way to virtue signal to protect their company from having boycotts. They didn't need that very brand new Disney Plus from facing boycotts. And Splash Mountain was a sufficient sacrifice, I would say, for the company. And so that's what happened here. So let's take a look now at, uh, I want to go down here to where it talks about Carmen's, well, no, let's stop here. This is a great one. It mm -hmm. talks about they're adding new characters. It's, the, you know, people are confused. This is not a retelling of Princess and the Frog. They are making up their whole brand new thing. And remember, it's being run by a lady who I've never seen be successful in any project she's done, Carmen Smith. The new ride, based on the brand's first original black princess character, set in 1920s New Orleans, it will have new mm -hmm. music provided by Grammy-winning uh, NOLA native P.J. Morton. And the Disney team explained that Princess Tiana's story is evolving as well. Again, they're not using the music from the movie. They're geniuses. <sighs> I can, I, just, I can hear the enthusiasm. You can tell they're really making good decisions, right, Lorena? Oh, yeah. 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 They're just coming up with these great gangbuster <laughs> ideas I that would are never, go over like a lead freaking balloon. <laughs> I would never take a popular movie and actually use its soundtrack or story for a ride. There's no way. That would be dumb. That Thank goodness stupid, they're making right? stuff that's all brand new. <laughs> the character will have a new look, a new company to run, and some new friends along, the, along for the ride to Mardi Gras. For example, Prince Naveen's little brother, and look at this naming they've come up with. Remember, Prince Naveen comes from another country, right? Moldonia. Look at his name. Brother Moldonia. Ralphie. Brother oh, Ralphie. Like that, just sounds, story. <laughs> that just sounds so <laughs> different, doesn't it? Oh, Non-North so American. Stupid. Yes. Yes, Lorena. These are the people who are who are redoing one of the most beloved attractions oh of all time. God. I Let's, just can't wait when people see this and they see Ralphie and they say you're going to shoot your eye out. <laughs> And, and by the way, with his drumstick, that, that's a Red Rider drumstick, no doubt. But Lorena, look who says it. Executive creative producer, Charita Carter. She's the one working under Carmen Smith. He will be there with a physical drum set. She goes on to explain that the animatronic character and his new instrument were partly inspired by a youth drum set. Imagineers discovered while researching the time period at the New Orleans Jazz Museum. Okay, so they saw a tiny drum set and were like, so, yeah, so put they Ralphie saw one in, in a there. museum. Yeah, let's do that. Really? God. Exactly. So here's what I want to wrap this thing up with. Mm -hmm. We go down here to the bottom. Said Carmen Smith, every project we always start with arming ourselves with knowledge. It's so important not to have a transactional relationship with a place or culture, but to have a relationship. Asked whether aspects or Easter egg elements of Splash Mountain might show up in the new rides design, Smith said, I don't think we want to give away or give that away just yet. Stay tuned. So Lorena, um, talking about this uh, idea that they, they don't have a transactional relationship. Do you think they'll be returning to New Orleans after this ride is done? Do you think that, that they're going to have a long-term relationship, these Imagineers, or do you think that this is, in fact, transactional? 
It's very transactional. They are going to burn the bridge after they cross it when this ride is, uh, is, you know, done and and people see yes and people see what's uh what's going up what's going on my family has history in new orleans i've been to new orleans several times i don't know what these people are looking at well they're they're not looking at new orleans this is a mountain and i don't know if you've noticed but louisiana doesn't have mountains no louisiana has zero mountains the only mountain that you might see maybe those floats at mardi gras but that's about it exactly and lorena let's look at this too this out of people as well and i think this goes to the heart of just how much people love this attraction and why disney is in deep trouble if you think about it if disney puts out a really bad movie let's say they put out i don't know in hypothetical world a little mermaid remake that does poorly i know that's not actually (laughs) happening right now of course (laughs) but if they do that then they take a hit at the box office. People don't go watch the movie and they lose money on uh, something that has a bloated budget. And then we move on. But the problem is that when they do this with attractions, those attractions will sit there for two decades with people looking at it and being mad for two decades because they ruined their Mm -hmm. favorite attraction. This happened actually one time before with Journey into Imagination at Epcot. But Splash Mountain is on an order of magnitude difference. I mean, this is... This is one of the most popular attractions in the world, and here's an article that proves it. Again, out of People by Nicholas Rice. Bruce Willis enjoys Disneyland Splash Mountain ride with his family. Says the actor and his family rode the ride for a final time ahead of its remodeling to a new Princess and the Frog theme in 2024. Now, what this is about, the reason it's worthwhile is because Bruce Willis is suffering from a type of dementia. He's a young man Mm -hmm. to be suffering from that. It really, really, really stinks, and we hate that. I mean, I, I just... I hate the idea that there's a family out there suffering with this. And if you out there are watching and your your family has a member suffering with dementia, I truly feel for you and I wish you absolutely the best uh, because that it, it, it is terribly hard to watch somebody lose their memories and lose the essence mm-hmm. of who they are. And it, it's, uh, it's not fun. But this family, Bruce Willis family, they were willing to have him seen out in public, which they have been trying not to do, mm-hmm. but they were willing to do that to make memories one last time on Splash Mountain. Apparently it's a place that they have fond memories and they were willing to put him out in public one more time to get to do it one more time. And I think this really speaks to uh, just how badly Disney has messed things up. Of course, there's the article, there's Bruce Willis. Um, But I think this speaks to just how badly Disney has messed up. They They have missed the mark in understanding how significant this is to so many people. So Lorena, what do you think about um, the memories that people have formed on this ride. Do you think that the public will go along with the new version or do you think the public will hold on to uh, perhaps being displeased with Disney? I really think people are going to be very vocal about their dislike um, of this attraction. It's, it, it is, it's like removing, um, removing, treasured memories when you're in line with your family, when you're riding the attraction with the family, when you get that picture with everyone you know, coming down, the, <laughs> coming down yes, the slide. Yes, that's a and great everyone point. is so excited to see the pictures. Everybody's got some kind of story about Splash Mountain, even the nickname Flash Mountain. You know, yes, everyone, yes. Well, everyone we, we won't go into why that is. Yes. Teenagers is enough for you to know. Yeah. Teenagers. Exactly. But everyone, everyone knows they have this, this connection with the, with the attraction. And it seems just so frivolous to throw those memories away by doing this overlay, which has no connection to, uh, to the original attraction that we know and love. I kind of liken it to how I feel or how I felt about Mr. Toad's wild ride being taken out of Disney World and replaced with Winnie the Pooh. I've never gotten over that. I'm still angry about that. I have memories from that attraction and I feel like for a lot of people, that feeling is going to be magnified by an order of 10. I've seen people look at the construction site like why? Why are they why are they changing this attraction that's uh 
that's so that's so beloved. And Disney really does seem to not seem to they are discounting the memories that people have with these theme parks. This is why people save up so long to go to these parks. This is why people make it a ritual to go to these parks. This is why people make it a point to take their family to these parks to experience these rides. And now they're taking they're taking this away. So I don't know. I don't think this is going to go over very well. People are just going to say, you know what? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I'll go to some other attraction. Maybe that Disney we'll has universal any, studios. Uh, updated. Exactly. I'll just go universal. That's really that the fear. Too. That should be the fear of Disney at this point. Oh yes. And, and think yes. about this Lorena. So universal studios is bringing a brand new theme park. It's a huge, massive yes. theme park, basically a new resort. They are bringing super Nintendo world. We believe that they're going to be announcing a Zelda expansion for Islands of Adventure. And what is Disney bringing to the table? They, they're they gutting Splash Mountain and replacing it with Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And they think that is a selling point. And I think it's as much a selling point as the latest Little Mermaid movie. I think that they have miscalculated that badly. So what do you think? How, how will Universal Studios, how much better is their offering versus Disney's at this point? <laughs> I, I'm trying. I'm trying to trying to <laughs> trying to figure out what to say because every time I visit Universal and I drive home, I have to go by. Not have to. I love going by the construction site for Epic Universe, and you see the scale of it. All the attractions that are going to be there. It's just exciting to see what is going to happen with this. All of this stuff that Universal. Is um is giving us because you know you have the Minions Land which is, and I think that's pretty much complete. They're just <laughs> waiting to flip the switch to uh, let exactly. people try out uh you know Minion Blast and all you know and uh, and all of that. But Disney's like, what do they have? Eh, we just had the Splash Mountain update. Epcot is still Walcott as it has been for I don't know how long. Took them what? four or five years to get the Tron ride open and Universal's just like, we're putting all this stuff out in a brand new, not just an attraction, a theme park that is literally twice the size of what they have now. Exactly. Now, Lorena, your assessment seems to be the same as what we are now starting to see from these Disney blog sites. This is inside the magic.net. Uh, they're not known, I would suppose, for some of the hardest hitting articles out on the web, but even they now have this article. Sa it says, cancel culture is killing Disney, and it goes into great length. We're not going to read it here on the channel, but it goes into great length explaining how the company is basically cutting off their nose to spite their face. They have these fantastic properties, and they're systematically destroying them. We've seen that time and time again. I think the, that the narrative is beginning to switch around Disney when you have these kinds of articles coming out from uh, places that usually just cover cupcake stories and fun stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and rampant rumors. And now they're beginning to notice, and it's hard not to because the crowd levels, crowd levels are down. The wait times mm -hmm. are down. Mm -hmm. We're getting, I don't know if you saw this, but yesterday we found out that they're cutting performances of Fantasmic at Disney's Hollywood studios. That is a show that is essentially that the showings are determined by their expected crowd levels. So when mm -hmm. they cut those, there's only one reason, essentially, they'll do it. And Lorena, I have one big piece of news that I'm ready to break now, and I want to get your take on this. Mm -hmm. And this comes to us via Jonas J. Campbell, who has, of course, he's the investigative reporter for that park place. He's often on the channel, and he has some connections that he has formed, and I want to congratulate him on that. But uh, these connections have essentially informed that uh, the one and only Tony Baxter, an Imagineer who is truly a legend mm -hmm. within Disney, someone who had huge impact and was a leader on the team developing the original Splash Mountain. Lorena, you'll recall that Tony Baxter was brought on supposedly to work on this project. Jonas mm -hmm. uh, has found out from reputable sources, although let's say this is rumor because we can't independently verify it. We're not, you know, we're not there on the ground at the Magic Kingdom. We're not behind the scenes in the offices of Burbank, but it is our very, very strong suspicion that Tony Baxter has been frozen out of this project 
and that he is not having any sort of impact creatively on what they're doing with his beloved Splash Mountain and that Disney brought him on simply uh, to have that name that they could throw out there. But I, I don't believe, Jonas doesn't believe, these sources don't believe that he is actually involved whatsoever. So it seems to me that they're not only just doing this and insulting fans, they're insulting the people who their legacies live in Disney. Lorena, what do you make of it? I, I just have to shake my head. It, it's it's so it's so underhanded of Disney, you know, to uh, to do this. We hear, you know, we hear Tony Baxter's name, and we're just like, okay, well, maybe he'll be there to write the ship, or you know, kind of make it make it as good as it could be. Exactly, make it as good as it can be. You know, don't depend on cheap screen gimmicks or whatever, but actually have a true storyline, old school imagineering, you know, like the likes of uh, Joe wrote. So that's what I would think. But it's pretty obvious that Disney just threw his name out there to kind of shut some of us up about this attraction to say, hey, if Tony Baxter is on it, it's going to come out great, right? It's going to be, it's going to be the best that it obviously can be and to find out that they basically said that just to kind of shut the masses up but yeah. are not freeze him out of the project. letting freeze him out of the project that is like not letting your master builder supervise the project like yeah we just have you here but you know just stay over in the corner someplace and we'll haul you out for photo ops and you know and that's yep. pretty uh that's pretty much it we well, you know, Lorena, it fits right in with what we were told by the insider uh, who came to us, whistleblower, I guess you might say, and, and told us that there was uh, sort of this uh, young individual who'd been brought on to work on Splash Mountain and that mm -hmm. they were gleefully and joyfully destroying the animatronics and the, the set pieces, et cetera, and that they felt like some sort of virtuous knight because they were destroying this piece of uh, hatred. And it, you just had to shake your head and think, what is wrong with these people? Like, wh what is wrong with them that they have this mindset? I mean, something is warped in their heads. This is, they're, they're gleefully destroying things that are parts of, of people's sincerely held beloved memories, you know? Mm -hmm. And people of all backgrounds, not just pale-skinned people, right? Lorena, final thoughts on Splash Mountain. I j it, it, it still just hurts me that you have authentic black culture that is being replaced because a certain group of people on behalf of a group of people that never asked them to be are offended and take it upon themselves that they have to change um, all of this to give us this shiny, distracted new version that they think is going to solve everything. Like this is but better, you wind up, right? You wind up instead with Ralphie. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lorena, I don't think people are going to be searching for Ralphie, although maybe they'll do it to, to laugh and, and, and sneer now that we brought this up. But w instead of Ralphie, if they want to find Lorena, where can they go on this great, big, beautiful web? Well, folks, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. And of course, you can find me on YouTube doing various videos and live streams for pop culture, sci-fi analysis, anime, gaming, and of course, my theme park streams and videos from the Orlando theme parks. And as always, Pro, thank you so much for having me on. I enjoyed doing these videos with you. Well, you're welcome. We love your content. We love your channel. We love you. And you're welcome anytime uh, to return. It's always a fun time with Lorena Creole, even when we have to cover sort of this dismal <laughs> Disney stuff where they just keep screwing up. Putting Ralphie, Ralphie, Prince Naveen's little brother. You would think he would have some kind of uh, name that would match Prince Naveen. No, it's Ralphie and he plays drums for some reason. So there you go. That's the creative <laughs> levels we're getting out of Disney. That's what they're going to do to Splash Mountain. We hope the company turns things around. We'd like to cover positive stuff, but this one's going to be sitting there in Anaheim and in Orlando for a long time. And we're all going to be reminded of this period of Disney where they were defunct when it comes to imagination, creativity, and more. All right, folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to the algorithms. When you click it, we're talking about the notification bell. If you would like to drop a comment down below, we sure would like that too. We care about what you think. We covet your comments, so drop one down below. The conversation ends with Lorena and myself. 
but it begins now with you. And folks, if you're not yet a member of the channel, it's the price of a soda, hop in, get some exclusive content. We sure would love to share that with you. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep having fun. Ah, Floral, it's time for you to walk the plank. What? Why? Because you, you haven't subscribed to WDW Pro yet. Nor bookmark that parkplace.com on your web browser to get great articles from great contributors. What? Yeah.